Sassy Gold is located in the prolific SK camp within the iconic Golden Triangle in British Columbia. The SK camp is a tightly held region that is home to just over a dozen junior exploration companies. Since 2017, four of these companies have risen from 10 to 30 million market caps to over 500 million within a very short amount of time. With over 183 million ounces of gold in current 43101 resources in the SK camp, Sassy Gold is looking to parlay an unusually quick grassroots gold discovery made possible by receding ice and snow into something much bigger. We're about to dive into a lot more of this compelling story that as an investor, you won't want to miss. In order to do this, we're bringing on CEO Mark Scott. Mark, welcome. Thanks, Brandon. Great to be with you. And great to have you. Uh, I'd like to first begin by giving investors an overview of the opportunity at hand with Sassy Gold. Mark, your stock has seen a significant increase in both volume and price since announcing the name change to Sassy Gold and closing your $3.6 million financing. Can you provide an overview of your company for those who may still be new to your story? Sassy Gold is laser focused on our marquee project, the Four More Gold Silver Project in Northwest BC. Uh, as you mentioned in the SK camp of the Golden Triangle, it presents uh, uh, an awful lot of upside potential with the Westmore Discovery Zone, uh, where there's high grade gold and silver in, in quartz veins, along with uh, VMS and gold and silver enriched VMS targets and other styles of mineralization elsewhere on the 146 square kilometer property. So we're very excited about that, that marquee uh, direct exploration opportunity. We also have significant equity holdings in three companies, Gander Gold Corporation, Galloper Gold, which is still private uh, and will apply to list on a Canadian exchange in, in the coming months, and Max Power Mining Corp. Then of course, last but not least, we have the High Rock Uranium Project just south of the historic Key Lake Mine and, and Mill site in northern Saskatchewan that gives SASE a, a winter drilling opportunity and, and year-round direct exploration news flow uh, to to play off of the summer season in Northwest BC, so it's a it's a pretty neat uh, high potential package of assets that we've put together in just the the two years that Sassy has been a public company. Yeah, and there's a lot of different angles to this company as well as an, an investor. There's a lot of things to be paying attention to, and I'd like to start first off with your former property. Uh, you've already taken advantage of receding glaciers at the former property with your high-grade gold discovery at Westmore in the southwest corner of the property. In 2020, this became one of the quickest early-stage drilling discoveries in SK Camp history after just a few months of field work. How do you plan on making another big breakthrough there this summer, and how close are you to getting to the source of all this widespread gold you can see right at surface? It is right at surface. The, the Westmore Discovery Zone is comprised of uh, more than two dozen quartz veins uh, that, that vary in width from a few centimeters to, to uh, as much as 30 meters uh, visible on surface, many of which contain visible gold and, and uh, you know, hundreds of high-grade gold and silver assay samples have been taken from those, those surface showings, those surface outcroppings uh, from those veins. You can see those veins across an area that's about a kilometer by a kilometer wide on surface and, and a vertical extent of about 400 vertical meters down the hillside at Westmore uh, to where those veins disappear under the Moore Glacier. And so there are a couple of opportunities at Westmore. One is to define mineable grade and width in the, in the veins as we see them above the uh, elevation of the valley below. Second is to find that a uh, significant source of all of that mineralization that at some point uh, uh, roughly 189.6 million years ago uh, fed those those veins uh, and, and in place that mineralization. So uh, we're going to keep drilling some of the veins that we uh, we know have produced high grade samples on surface and we're also going deeper and further down the hillside and eventually out under the ice to track down the source of all that high grade material. Yeah, and speaking of millions of years ago, I know that uh, there's a ge geochronological study that was taken on the rocks there because you want to make sure they're the right age. The reason why this is so important for investors, I highly recommend looking at Bruce Jack or SNP. You can see the massive gold uh, deposits that they have there, and it's proving that you are in the right time and the right space. It's just before there was glaciers and snow covering it. That's now receding this. That's why you have been able to find this with your team and not someone a couple of decades ago or more 
more when they're looking at that. So very, very excited about that. And speaking of drilling, your drills are moving right now and they're being done on mountaintop. So logistics and infrastructure become such a key component with regard to feasibility of creating a new mine. Uh, the question I have for you is what type of infrastructure does Sassy Gold currently have to work with up at the former property? Well, the infrastructure in the in the SK Camp region has really grown by leaps and bounds over the last couple of decades since the original SK Creek discovery. And, you know, you have a, a tidewater port at Stewart just down the road, uh, a highway, Highway 37, that's in very good condition that runs right through the camp. Uh, three relatively newly constructed hydro generating stations and high voltage transmission lines, uh, an airstrip at Bob Quinn and, and lots of service providers and a, and a, and a community, uh, uh, that that's very much in favor of st sustainable development in the area. So uh, sort of uh, at large in the area, that's the the infrastructure that exists along with with plentiful water. Uh, it's a great place to to be working more more locally. Uh, the access road, the planned access road for the Glore Creek project, which is adjacent to our former property, runs right through our claims. And in fact, within a couple hundred meters of of our campsite, our 20 person exploration camp that we've had there uh, in the same location for the last three years. And the planned location of the Galore Creek Concentrator, uh, Galore Creek being a project whose resource is some uh, 6 billion pounds of copper and 9 million ounces of gold, 50 50 owned by Newmont, the world's biggest gold company, and Tech, Canada's biggest base metals company. The planned location of their concentrator for that project, when it does get developed, is is only about 1500 meters away from the top of the Westmore Discovery Zone. So uh, the the local infrastructure uh, and and potential is uh, for mining and and uh, and treatment and transportation uh, workforce and service providers is is all plentiful. It's uh, it's pretty ideal in that area, actually. Yeah, and that can't be stressed enough because you need to have those logistics there. If you do find a deposit uh, and you want to be able to make that in a mine, if there's no roads, if there's no access point, if there's nothing like that, it makes it much less feasible. The fact that this Galore uh, Creek mine is going to be right there, especially that uh, that processor or con concentrator, I should say, is very, very key for investors to understand. Uh, something that's also important for uh, investors to understand is that Sassy Gold also has large share ownerships in several other companies, in Gander Gold, in Galloper Gold, and Max Power. Can you explain the strategy behind this for investors who are curious as to these holdings? Strategy behind establishing those holdings, uh, uh, first and foremost, the establishment of the spin-out uh, Gander Gold company that came out of Sassy with the properties we originally acquired in Newfoundland was to provide our investors with sort of a double whammy opportunity uh, without SASE diluting its share structure by funding all of the work that's going on in Newfoundland. So the scope of the, the scale of the projects we took on in Newfoundland necessitated it being its having its own marquee where where SASE can stay focused on the four more. Uh, Gander Gold, SASE owns about 35 million shares in Gander Gold, which represents about 48% ownership of that company. And and Gander's on uh, on track to make discoveries in Newfoundland, and uh, you know you can see the news that they're they're putting out uh, uh, now that they have a full year of exploration, uh, early stage exploration uh, under their belts in Newfoundland. Galloper Gold is a newer company. Uh, Sassy acquired a number of projects that were uh, adjacent or contiguous to one another bundled them up and then and then sold those properties to Galloper and took an 8 million share position in Galloper. That's still a private company, but it'll it'll apply for listing on a Canadian exchange later this year. And then Max Power Mining Corp, SASE, optioned its nickel bat claims to Max Power last year. And they ran a small drilling program last year on on that property. And and they have some big things in store, we know, for uh, for the coming months. So the, the strategy really for those positions now that those companies are established is that it gives, they give SASE tremendous optionality in terms of non-dilutive financing opportunities. Uh, you know, we can in the, in the medium term look to, uh, turn some of those positions into cash or we can hang on for the appreciation we believe will happen in each of those three, uh, three companies and, and their, their market caps and, and then realize an even bigger benefit down the road by virtue of that. So 
Uh, we have positioned SASE for tremendous long-term financial strength, uh, whilst uh, really doing an effective job, we believe, of managing our dilution. Yeah, fantastic to hear and appreciate you going into detail on those. Uh, well, we've talked about uh, the geology, we've talked about logistics, we've talked about uh, some of the other companies that you have holdings in, but just as important to this are the people behind it. People are very much uh, such an important aspect to any type of junior exploration or mining company. Can you tell us a little bit about your team and uh, on the ground and behind the scenes and why you're confident they can lead you to a major discovery in the near future here? Well, I'm a lucky guy to get to work with uh, such, a, such a skilled and experienced team of professionals in, in all aspects of the business. You know, our team brings hundreds of years of combined experience to uh, exploration and mining uh, and finance and marketing, uh, which, which are sort of the two equally important hemispheres of, of this business. So, uh, we're, you know, our technical team is led by Ian Frazier, uh, our VP of exploration, who has decades of experience in the field and, and has been a part of several uh, deposits that have been discovered and brought into production over the years. On the ground, Mike Middleton and his team of prospectors have been critical to the development of the Westmore Discovery zone in particular and they're the that group of four are the are the four guys after whom we've named the four amigos vein uh, that we're drilling as we as we speak uh, today and um, and then in the back office uh, technical support we get from Ronaker McKenzie Geoscience in Sudbury and Dr. Peter Lightfoot who's an SK Rift expert mm -hmm. um, and then you know if you look at uh, finance and board and marketing uh, we have a great team. Sean McGrath, our CFO, has decades of experience, again, in all aspects of, of junior exploration and mining and, and on and on through our board with Terry Coughlin and, uh, and Kate McLaughlin and, and Richard Savage and our whole marketing team, Terry Bramhall in our investor relations office. Uh, we have a really fantastic team that we've put together over the last three years, and, and I'm, uh, I'm lucky to, uh, to work with them every day. Yeah, very exciting to hear. And it sounds like there's a lot of different aspects that are working for you with Sassy Gold and very excited to see what happens with that. But all of these things come to a roadblock at times in terms of political and environmental issues. Uh, speaking on that really quickly, what's the current landscape look like for a company in the SK, uh, SK camp like you're seeing right now with Sassy Gold? Sassy is really fortunate to have a, a strong working relationship with the Taltan Nation and Taltan central government. Uh, we have a uh, uh, communication and engagement agreement in place, have had for the last three years that keeps an open and, and running dialogue going between us and, and TCG and uh, ensures that our, for example, our employment and, and procurement opportunities are run through their office to make sure that we, we give every opportunity to local Taltan owned and Taltan partnered uh, contractors to bid on, on the work that we do every season. So we go through that process with them each year and do an annual report out uh, at the, the annual mining conference in, uh, in Vancouver in January every year. So we have a good ongoing uh, working relationship with the Tall Ten, uh, whose territory our, our project is located within. And, and uh, you know, that helps us with permitting and the discussions with the provincial regulators and, uh, and it's just the right way to do business. So we uh, we're very happy with the relationship we have, um, and the and the climate and the approach to, uh, you know, the positive approach to sustainable economic development that's being uh, that's being undertaken in the north. Yeah, very very important, and, and glad to hear all of that as well. Well, lastly, I always like to finish off with an important question of asking what should investors be excited about and looking forward to from Sassy Gold over the coming weeks and months. First and foremost, the drill is turning at the Westmore Discovery Zone as we speak. Uh, the results from the last two years have improved upon one another each season, uh, from the first handful of samples from Westmore to. Uh, drilling it in 2020 to uh, to going back last year and generating more pierce points through some of those quartz veins and high grade intersections. We're going back this year to improve on those again and and keep tracking down the source of all of that mineralization uh, at Westmore and beyond uh, across the the Formore property. So uh, we we really believe there's some exciting direct exploration results coming, and then of course 
the indirect benefits that our shareholders will derive from those equity positions in those other companies we mentioned a while ago, we think creates a really high ceiling for for SASE and its shareholders. Yeah, honestly, thank you so much, Mark, for your time. Very excited about this. I know as a personal shareholder as well, I'm very excited to see what happens over the coming weeks and months with your company. And as these developments happen and news releases come out, we'll be right here making sure we get you back on into studio to talk about some more. So thanks again, Mark. Anytime, thank you.